Hello everyone, and welcome back to my personal channel, where we remember that the rich and powerful are to blame. Today, we are reviewing a book by Jesse Eisinger about why and how our regulatory and law enforcement system have failed to deal with white collar crime. I had to wait a few seconds to say the title of the book to make sure I'm not demonetized, but the title is The Chicken Shit Club. The Chicken Shit Club tells the story of first, how we started prosecuting white collar crime, and then how we stopped. White collar crime is one of those things that I have a lot of interest in, and I found this book to be a really useful and enjoyable look at the problem. Jumping ahead to the conclusion, I highly recommend this book. Jesse is a truly talented journalist and writer who clearly did deep research into this issue, and I think this book really helped improve my own understanding. With that out of the way, I do want to summarize some parts of the argument because I found it so compelling. The name, The Chicken Shit Club, comes from a speech by James Comey. Yes, the James Comey who messed with the 2016 election. But before that, he gave a speech to the Southern District of New York after he was named the U.S. Attorney. He looked at all the prosecutors gathered in front of him and asked them all, Who here has never had an acquittal or a hung jury? Please raise your hand. Once hands were raised, he looked over the room once again and stated, Me and my friends have a name for you guys. You are members of what we like to call the Chicken Shit Club. Comey believed that if it's a good case and the evidence supports it, you must bring it. He told the troops, I know it can get crazy in court. You feel stressed when the judge is pounding on you. When that happens, you can all take a deep breath. I don't want any of you to make an argument you don't believe in. I want you to believe that you are doing the right thing. Make the right decision for the right reasons. This particular belief of James Comey is one that I endorse without endorsing, you know, the rest of James Comey. However, despite this speech, the book, and myself as well, argue that we have all become victims of the chicken shit club. This is something we talk about all the time on Crypto Critics Corner. The government wants the W. They don't want to deal with actually prosecuting the crime. Recently, on the podcast, we discussed Binance as an example of how the government often seems willing to excuse just about any inappropriate behavior from a corporation as long as at least one executive is willing to take a token plea and a pinky promise that your company will start behaving. Even here, I was somewhat overstating it because often regulators and law enforcement won't even insist on the token sentence against an executive. This is backed up by the data. Jesse references a Wall Street Journal analysis of 156 cases, which were brought by the SEC, the CFTC, and the Department of Justice against the banks after the great financial crisis, and they found that in more than 80% of those cases, in more than four out of five of those cases, the government didn't even bother finding a single executive at fault. Only a single high-level executive was charged in any of those cases, and only civilly by the SEC. Jesse argues this is because prosecutors began to see probes of single human beings, one by one by one, as a slog. Nasty trench warfare that carries a risk of humiliation if they lose. He argues convincingly in this book that the increase in deferred prosecution agreements which allowed companies to avoid the bulk of criminal consequences by cooperating, even ended up causing companies to agree to these agreements as soon as they hear they're under investigation because they hope that doing so will make it so they can avoid the investigators finding the serious crimes they are doing. One quote from the book that hammers this home is, Large and powerful corporations, under the advice of their expensive defense lawyers, were eager to appear cooperative and wrap up investigations quickly before prosecutors uncovered more damning information. The government can get a win. The company can avoid serious consequences. Everyone wins. Well, except for those of us who are neither massive corporations or government prosecutors looking for a promotion. People who aren't in those categories lose. You lose. I lose. We collectively lose. But these corporations are winning. That's probably not great. The prosecutorial service arguably loses as well, with Jesse arguing that settlements have another downside. They weaken prosecutorial skills. 
Over time, prosecutorial aversion turns into loss knowledge. Settlement culture breeds investigative laziness and erodes trial skills. One example the book uses to emphasize this argument is Arthur Anderson. Arthur Anderson was the auditing firm implicated in the accounting fraud at WorldCom and Enron. And the prosecution of Arthur Anderson is a turning point in the history of white-collar crime. Specifically, Arthur Anderson was able to fight a PR battle while they were appealing parts of their case all the way to the Supreme Court. Publicly, they argued that this was a firm of 26,000 innocent people to imply that punishing those people for the crimes of several partners could not be right. And eventually, they were able to get then-CNN and later Fox Business host Lou Dobbs on their side. He was able to turn the story of corporate malfeasance of the awful culture at Arthur Anderson into a perceived overstep by the federal government. This nonsense narrative resonated and still resonates in conservative talking points and helped contribute to a hesitancy for others to prosecute this type of case. Lanny Brewer, Obama administration's head of the Department of Justice Criminal Division, said in 2012, in reaching every charging decision, we must take into account the effect of an indictment on innocent employees and shareholders and shareholders, just as we must take into account the nature of the crimes committed and the pervasiveness of the misconduct. I personally feel that it's my duty to consider whether individual employees with no responsibility for or knowledge of misconduct committed by others in the same company are going to lose their livelihood if we indict the corporation. In large multinational companies, the jobs of tens of thousands of employees can be at stake, and in some cases, the health of an industry or the markets are a real factor. Those are the kinds of considerations in white-collar crime cases that literally keep me up at night and which must play a role in responsible enforcement. That's right, the head of the Department of Justice's criminal division after the great financial crisis wanted to make sure that he emphasized the importance of taking into account the market and the shareholders when considering whether to prosecute white-collar fraudsters who had committed egregious acts against the American public. This lack of desire to go after these challenging prosecutions has resulted in us all suffering. Even worse, things have arguably gotten worse since Jesse wrote this book. The Supreme Court seems very likely to end up overturning the Chevron deference which is what allows regulators to interpret laws to regulate. Without this, the SEC, the CFTC, the EPA, the FDA, the FTC, all of them will be even more toothless than they currently are, and they currently have to gum their food. The Chicken Shit Club by Jesse Eisinger is a powerful book which speaks powerfully about a serious problem. He walks us through why we can no longer prosecute white-collar crime and fraud and points out the consequences of that. I highly recommend this book.